The officer involved shooting that rock Brooklyn Center will have a significant financial impact on the only child of Dante Wright. Last summer, the city of Brooklyn Center and the family of Dante Wright reached a settlement agreement worth more than $3 million. This week, we learned that the majority of that settlement will go to Dante Wright Jr. Delane Cleveland joins us now with more details. Delane? Shannon, even though that $3,250,000 settlement was reached last June, there was concern brought up by the mother of Dante Wright's child over how that money would be distributed. A 62-page court order issued Wednesday has solved that dilemma. According to a ruling by a Hennepin County District Court judge, Dante Wright Jr. will receive more than $2 million. Another 650000 will be divided up between Dante Wright's family members, with the majority going to his parents, Katie and Aubrey Wright. The remaining 578000 will be split between two law firms and the trustee for Wright's family, which amounts to 33% of the overall settlement. Initially, the attorneys had asked for 40% of the settlement money, but the judge criticized the attorney's fees, saying that the firm spent many hours on activities that did not advance the trustee's position in a wrongful death or civil rights action against the city of Brooklyn Center. The documents also alluded to the profound animosity between Dante Wright's family and China Whitaker, the mother of Dante Wright's son, with Whitaker saying that she hadn't received any of the $1 million raised in a GoFundMe campaign for the Dante Wright Senior Memorial Fund. Meanwhile, attorneys will submit proposals to the court sometime in the next 30 days for how to distribute the funds to Dante Wright Jr. Shannon. Thanks, Delane. Neighbors in a Plymouth neighborhood want the rental license revoked for a home that was the scene of a murder two weeks ago. A 4,000 square foot home has no business being rented for $175 a night in a family neighborhood. It's an invite for a party. I'm pleading with you and the members of the council to please take action to help bring a sense of safety back into our family friendly neighborhood. Neighbors and their children say they are traumatized by what happened. According to criminal charges, a large party was going on when a 19-year-old Brooklyn Park suspect shot and killed a 20-year-old Brooklyn Center man inside the home on Oakview Lane. According to the city's current rental ordinance, the city is required to notify the property owner before any possible council action that hasn't happened yet. The city council directed staff to do so this week. Plymouth's public safety director also spoke, recognizing the pain the neighbors are feeling. Like many of these that we've had over the last couple of years, I won't soon forget. Um, I was there that night, um, saw the victim, um, was one of two people that told his mother that her son had died. Um, so um, I feel um, all the same tragic you know, feelings that all of you, you know, uh, are experiencing. The city council expects to hold a meeting on Thursday, March 30th. At that time, the property owner would be allowed to attest a likely license revocation. The city is also expected to vote on an updated ordinance for short-term rentals. According to new home sales data released this week, home prices are softening. The median sales prices across the Twin Cities grew less than 1% last month to $342,000. Experts say the slight rise is due to higher mortgage rates. In Plymouth, prices dropped nearly 12% last month compared to a year ago. In Maple Grove, prices also fell 12%. Other cities in the northwest suburbs also saw declines. A Brooklyn Park woman's balloon business has really taken off, thanks in part to a Hennepin County program. Erin Arstad is the benefactor of a program called Elevate Hennepin. Reporter Sarah Allen explains. So here is where the magic happens. Erin Arstad is up to her elbows in balloons, but she wouldn't have it any other way. Known as the Balloon Lady, she spends her week preparing balloons for her creations that grace graduation parties, baby showers, large group events, and everything in between. Pretty good bang for your buck in the sense that balloons take up a lot of space and add a lot of color to a space. Arstad got into the balloon business after realizing that there was a niche that needed to be filled. It was my daughter's seventh birthday at the time and I saw a balloon arrangement on Pinterest and loved it and I called and I couldn't find anyone locally to make it so I said, okay, let me give it a try. Soon she was getting lots of calls for her creations. It just has snowballed. When she realized that her side hustle was blowing up, she was ready for a career change. 
but not sure about all the logistics to starting a business. <laughs> I was a mortgage lender, so that's quite it's quite the jump. That's where Hennepin Elevate comes in to help. They put entrepreneurs in contact with advisors to get their ideas off the ground. People come to Elevate and I help them as a women venture business consultant. Along with getting help building a business plan, Arstad also worked with other advisors that provided tax and legal know-how. All of the framework that they're providing me with is putting me way ahead of where I would be without them. Our stad has been able to soar to new heights faster thanks to the support and went full-time this year with her business, Balloon Fancy. In Brooklyn Park, Sarah Allen, CCX News. Our stad would like to open up a warehouse to store her balloons and also provide a space where people can pick up the arrangements. For more than 20 years, a program through Osseo Area Schools has created a unique connection between students here and students in Mexico. The program is called Students Connecting Through International Service, and fifth graders from four elementary schools collect donations to buy school supplies and then deliver the supplies to the U.S.-Mexican border. The student representatives from Basswood Elementary counted money from the donations today. They can't really go to school unless they have school supplies, so unlike us, um, it must be pretty hard for them. I just want to see the happy smiles on the kids' faces when they get their school supplies. The delivery trip to Sasabe, Sonora, Mexico will happen in April.